So recently I made a video about the true size of Canadian cities and literally three days later, Statistics Canada finally decided to release their 2021 census data. So yeah, I guess my video is already outdated, which is kind of sad. <laughs> But yeah, this gives us, well, a great opportunity to make a video about the 2021 census. I mean, demographics are fun, right? And naturally, let's first start with national statistics. Canada actually had a rather steady growth over the last five years, adding an additional 1.8 million new Canadians for a total of 36,991,981. This makes Canada the fastest growing nation in the G7 at 5.2%, double the growth experienced in the United States. But let's be real, the G7 countries are, well, not much of a competition in terms of population growth. I mean, Italy and Japan are both in the negatives with population declines. But surprisingly, Canada still comes at seventh fastest growing in the G20, beating out countries like India and just short of Mexico. Most of this growth occurred before the pandemic between 2016 and 2019, with 2019 actually being a record high annual increase of 1.6% or 583,000 new Canadians in just one year. Population growth virtually halted in 2020 due to the pandemic, making immigration much more difficult. Take a look at this graph showing intercentral five-year population growth and annual growth we can immediately notice a record growth year in 2019, followed by a record low in 2020. This indicates to us that Canada's growth is, well, mostly entirely attributed to immigration. Nearly 80% of the population gain can be attributed to immigration, while only 20% of the increase is due to natural increases. In fact, during this census period, the rate of natural increase fell to 0.1%, the lowest on record. This means that Canada would effectively be stagnant without immigration or even start declining, a trend that can be seen in Japan and Italy since the 2020s as we saw previously. And just to throw another statistic at you, with current growth trends, Canada could expect to reach 55 million people by the end of 2060, surpassing Italy which by then will have experienced a population decline making their population in 2060 at around 50 million. All right, so that is great news for Canada. Most regions in the country prospered even when considering the negative effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's now take a deeper dive into the regions of Canada and see just how they performed during the last five years. And as I like to do, and there's no bias here, I promise we will start from the East Coast. And surprisingly, we have good news for the Maritimes. For the first time since the 1940s, the population of the maritime provinces are actually growing faster than the prairie provinces. It's almost hard to believe. Well, with one slight exception, Newfoundland Labrador actually saw a population decline of 1.8%, once again starting a downward trend that was temporarily reversed in the 2011 census. The 2010s actually marked an oil boom for the province, prompting many to come back to the rock. However, as we all know, oil has seen better days and this is causing the provincial economy to suffer once again. At the time of this recording, this could change once again now that oil prices are once again on the rise. Man, what a roller coaster oil really is. Anyways, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward's Island grew at their fastest rate since the 1970s. Good job, guys. Finally turning things around here. Prince Edward's Island even posted the highest population growth rate on record for the province at 8%. Although in all fairness, PEI is Canada's least populated province at 154k, making this achievement a little easier. Nova Scotia also had a great census. The province saw a growth rate of 5% from 924k to 969k, marking the end to decades of stagnation. By looking at this graph, we can see that Nova Scotia had not surpassed a growth rate of 1% during the last five censuses. The last time it had seen some decent growth was in a 1991 census with 3.1% and the province even experienced negative growth in the 2001 census. Most of this growth has been concentrated in Halifax, which has gained quite a bit of attention during the census. 
Halifax, the CMA, grew by 9.1% to reach 465k, making it the 8th fastest growing CMA in the country. Halifax also has the fastest growing downtown core in the country at 26.1%, making the city one of the densest in Canada. Now moving on to neighboring New Brunswick, she too saw a record census with a growth rate of 3.8%, much better than 2016's negative 0.5%. This makes New Brunswick home to 775,000 inhabitants. Moncton and Fredericton are also two CMAs that saw significant growth. The Moncton CMA grew by 8.9%, making it 10th fastest growing in Canada, while the Fredericton CMA grew at a respectable 5.8%. These are rather impressive numbers for cities who, while well, tended to have much lower than average growth rates in the past. Now, why is this the case for Atlantic Canada? Well, Atlantic Canada suddenly became an attractive region during the pandemic. Attracted by cheap real estate and slower pace of life, many individuals from urban centers like Toronto and Montreal decided to make the move now that working from home is much more accessible. Interprovincial migration is actually positive for these three provinces for the first time since the 1986 census. See, the pandemic might have actually been, well, a blessing in disguise for the Atlantic region of Canada. All right, now let's move on to La Belle Province, Quebec. Quebec saw a pretty average growth rate at 4.1%, below the national average of 5.2%, making the province home to 8.5 million inhabitants. Most of this growth can be attributed to immigration prior to the pandemic. This marks a continued trend for Quebec, where its share of the Canadian population is slowly decreasing, a trend shared with Atlantic Canada. In 2021, Quebec's share of the population fell to 23%. And by looking at this graph, we can see that its share of the population has decreased for 17 consecutive censuses, all the way back to the 1940s, when its share of the population was around 28%. Just to put that into context, in 1871, four years after Confederation and also Canada's first census, the share of the population of Quebec was just above 32%. Now this trend is quite worrisome for many Quebecers as this effectively indicates a decline in the importance of the province, having less and less political weight. Not to mention that this also indicates a decline in the proportion of French speakers in Canada both of which put Quebec in a weaker position within the Confederation. Now moving on to the mother of provinces, Ontario continues to absolutely dominate in terms of Canadian demographics. Ontario saw its population grow to 14.2 million people over the last five years, representing a population growth of 5.8%. Prior to the pandemic, Ontario received twice as many immigrants in three years as they received during the entire census cycle between 2011 and 2016. This reality is not surprising as most new immigrants prefer to live in an urban environment and Ontario is home to many large and medium-sized metro areas, some of which are in the top fastest growing CMAs in Canada, such as London in fourth position, Kitchener, Cambridge, Waterloo in sixth spot, Oshawa in 7th spot, and Guelph in 9th spot. With this said, Ontario now represents a share of the Canadian population that has grown to 38.5%. That is essentially 4 out of 10 Canadians calling Ontario home. And this, well, is a trend that is likely to continue in the future. Now let's take a closer look at Western Canada's performance during the 2021 census. In the 2016 census, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta were the provinces with the fastest growth rates. This is no longer the case with all of them having a growth rate that is below the national average of 5.2%. Manitoba saw a growth rate of 5%, the highest in the prairie provinces, growing their population to 1.34 million people. Saskatchewan experienced a growth rate of 3.1%, which is even lower than provinces like New Brunswick, for example, and increasing their population to 1.13 million people. And finally, Alberta had a growth rate of 4.8%, growing their population to 4.26 million people. 
This is quite a poor performance for Alberta as this growth rate marks a considerable drop from 2016 when it was the highest in Canada at 11.6%. And by looking at Alberta's historical growth rates, we can notice that this is Alberta's slowest growth since the 1980s. This slow growth in the prairies and especially Alberta can mostly be explained by lower oil prices that started in 2014, creating higher unemployment, which then encouraged negative interprovincial migration. In Alberta's case, this marked the first decline of interprovincial migration since the 1991 census. Finally, we have reached the Pacific Ocean and the last province on this list, beautiful British Columbia. British Columbia saw some pretty impressive growth this past five years with a growth rate of 7.6%, second highest amongst the provinces, making its population grow just a little above 5 million people. This growth is actually mainly due to interprovincial migration from elsewhere in Canada, with many of BC's CMAs experiencing the most growth within Canada. For example, Kelowna is the fastest growing CMA in Canada with a growth rate of 14%, which is quite incredible. Chilliwack is second fastest growing, Kamloops is third, and Nonemo is fifth in Canada. It is obvious to see with this graph that British Columbia absolutely dominates in terms of CMA growth rates in 2021 with four out of the top five. In fact, BC is the only province in Western Canada that had a net positive interprovincial migration with 97,000 individuals moving to the province from elsewhere in Canada. And honestly, I can't really blame them as BC has so much to offer, not to mention just how beautiful it really is. Immigration also played a key role in the growth, however, at a much lower proportion than Ontarian cities such as Linden and Kitchener. Alright, that is it for the provinces, but let's not forget about the territories. I mean, I feel like I tend to neglect these poor guys, but not today. Anyways, Yukon actually led the country for the highest growth at 12.1%, growing the population to 40k. Yeah, that's right, 40k. So just keep in mind that 12.1% jump is much easier to achieve when the population is this low. On the flip side, the population of the Northwest Territories declined by 1.7%, dropping to 41k. This is also the worst growth in Canada for the 2021 census. Ought to see that Yukon had the highest growth in Canada while the Northwest Territories had the worst growth even though they are neighbors. This can largely be attributed to the fact that Yukon receives far more immigrants while the Northwest Territories relies mainly on natural increases. This is also the case for Nunavut, although they managed to have a positive growth rate of 2.5%, increasing the total population to 37,000. Interestingly, Nunavut and the Northwest Territories have the highest fertility rates in Canada, consequently also making them the youngest in the country. And just as a fun fact, I always find it mind-blowing to see that the three territories combined only have a population of 118,000, despite occupying 39.3% of the country's total area. Now that's some real low density and true wilderness. So there you have it, a brief overview of the 2021 census. Now keep in mind that this has been a very simple overview of the census as the census committee has only released the population counts. There will be more data releases in the future with the next one being on April 27th on gender, age and sex. Anyways, I hope you found this video awesome. Uh, if so, please consider leaving a like and even subscribing to the channel as that always helps out. And uh, I'll see you next time. Ciao, guys.